G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're going to be looking at a new tank that we've never before featured on Gallery Aquatica TV. We've been asked by the client to give it a bit of a once over, give it a check up, see how it's going, a bit of a clean and service. But what's most interesting is that the client has offered to pay us in frags. Now I haven't seen this tank in ages and I haven't seen the frags at all, so be really interesting to see how this tank is going and if I've made a good decision with exchanging the service for frags. Check it out. How good is this? It's even better than the photos that I've seen of this tank. The colors of the coral are sensational and the fish, from what I've seen so far, look really, really nice. So we'll take you through how we do the service on this tank, and then we'll have a closer look at the fish, the corals, and most importantly, the frags. I really like the aquascape of this tank. It's basically a single large arch, which allows for the separation of the SBS across the front, which are appreciating the higher light and the higher flow, and the LPS and zoas around the bottom of the tank. You can see we've got some torch and hammers. Uh, there's a Giardini over here. Everything is really in the perfect place in terms of the light and the flow. Now, the fish are something else as well. And the star of the show for me is the Potteri Angel. It's really nice, it's got great color, but there's also a yellow tang and a powder blue. Now, as is often the way with fish like powder blues, this tank did suffer from a little bit of marine white spot. And so one of the pieces of equipment that this tank is running is a UV steriliser, it's a UV twist 57 watt, and that has effectively uh, rid the tank of the white spot. And looking at this powder blue, it's absolutely perfect and free of any disease. So we'll have a quick look at the componentry on this tank before we start the service. The lighting system is a little bit interesting. These two lights are Mars Aqua. Now, they do put out a fairly good light, but they don't have a lot of the bells and whistles of something like a Radeon or a Hydra. But they're certainly doing the job. And uh, one of the interesting things is the way that they've been mounted. Uh, this is like a, a connected type of system that you can create very easily from parts you buy from a hardware store and so you can make a frame um, very easily and so this tank has got a frame that certainly suits the lights. Uh, the client has spoken about looking at getting some Orfex for this tank and I think it would definitely benefit the system but these Mars Aqua are doing quite a good job. Let's have a look underneath the tank at the filtration of this system. We're underneath the tank looking at the sump. And the first thing you notice is this relatively large Deltec skimmer that has almost perfect dilution of waste. It's really pulling a lot of skimmate out of this system. Now after the water goes through the protein skimmer, it passes through this large amount of biological media. So we've got marine pure spheres as well as the cubes. So the water passes through the biological media into the return section, which is a Vectra S1, which pumps water back up into the tank. There's also a pump in here which feeds water through to the chiller which is in the room behind this one. Uh, behind the tank we've got the chiller as well as the dosing vessels. So this tank is running Triton and based on the photos that I've seen of this tank over the last few months, the Triton has made the biggest difference to the colour and the growth of these corals. It's a Kamoa X4 uh, running this, uh, the Triton feeding the supplements into this section here. We've also got, as mentioned, a UV twist 57 watt, uh, keeping the marine protozoa bay, as well as an automatic top-up system, which feeds RO into the sump, keeping the salinity stable. Now we're gonna start this service by testing the water. Um, the client hasn't had a chance to test the water as, as much as he would like, so we'll start with that and see what the parameters are sitting at. I've just completed the testing for the parameters of this system. So let's have a quick look at where this tank is sitting. The specific gravity or the salinity is 1.026. We 
had a level of uh, what I would call zero nitrates, so non-detectable amount of nitrate. The phosphate was 0.11, which I don't see as a big problem. I think in a tank like this, it's quite acceptable. A lot of people would look to lower that, but the water change that we're going to do will help a little bit. The pH is 8.4, which I would say is ideal for this system. Now, this is where it gets a bit more interesting. The degrees of carbonate hardness is 6.4. Now, typically, when we're running Triton, we want it a bit higher than that, and I would normally be aiming for closer to eight. Um, so we are gonna have to look at increasing the KH on this system. The calcium was 445, and the magnesium was 1400. So overall, these levels are pretty good. Uh, we're going to do a small water change on this system. Given the relatively low nutrient content, uh, and the fact that the uh, calcium, KH and mag aren't too far out of whack. Uh, we're only gonna do a small water change, and I think we'll probably do about a 20 or 30% water change today. I'm gonna start by cleaning this protein skimmer out, and one of the good things about these Deltec is they've got a nice long drain hose. So I'll start by draining it out. <laughs> That's um, pretty putrid putrid stuff. So I'm just letting it drain out and once this is drained I'm going to take it away to the laundry sink and give it a clean. It's always good to clean the neck of your protein skimmer when you've got time so that you can see exactly where it's skimming at. It makes it easier to tune. Alright so that's all the waste drained. I can smell that. I'll take this cup off Remove that air intake and I'll take this away and clean it. I'm just having a look at the tank and working out exactly what I need to turn off for this water change. Now, the guys, uh, wave makers are right at the top, so they're definitely gonna need to be turned off. Obviously, I need to turn off the return pump so it doesn't run dry when I drop the water level down. We've got a couple of other wave makers that I guess they're twins, they're a little bit lower and I'm only planning on doing uh, 25 or 30%, so I think they'll be okay. But I'll start by turning off the guys and the return pump. I'll turn off the automatic top up as well so it doesn't scream at us. If it's going to. No, that's all good. And now I'll get my hose and we'll start the water change. The hardest part about this is going to be finding somewhere in this tank where I can put my hose in without sucking up some tentacles. Hopefully this corner will be okay. If I need to, I can move that fun gear across. But I'm gonna put it here. Now we're on the second floor of this house. So we've got a really big head height and I think that this is going to drain really quickly. So I'm gonna go start the siphon and then race back up here to stop it before we drain too much. Just had a sneak look at our frags and I'm pretty excited to show you but they're out of the water at the moment so I'm just splashing a little bit of water over them so they stay dry as well as over this no so they stay wet splashing water over them so they stay wet I'm also splashing water over the Dallas coral all right we're gonna stop it there because one of the tunes is starting to run dry. So I'm just letting my hose purge out. And once it's purged, I'm gonna plug it into the pump and we'll fill this tank back up again. Obviously we want this whole process to be as quick as possible because our frags are out of the water, getting dry, which we don't want. probably going to fill up in about 10 seconds. We usually use this uh, pump and hose system for tanks which are 10 times this size. 
So I have to be really careful that I don't put too much water in. So our water level is at the weir. It's just starting to go down. So I'll turn this off. Make sure it doesn't knock any corals. There's some really precious little frags in here. Uh, it's an M1. The M1 is back on. So our return pump is running. The level in the sump is probably on the high side, but better to be on the high side than the low side. I can always drain some water out very easily. Hopefully I don't have to pump any more water in. We'll just give the tank a little while to reset and um, then we'll have a look at those frags. I'm just finishing up the service on this tank and because I've overfilled the tank, I'm draining it out into this bucket and I like to drain the sump down to the point where the automatic top-up system kicks in and that way I know I shouldn't be increasing the salinity of the system. Now, we've also put some water into the bucket that we're gonna put our frags into. So in a sec, we'll have a look at those frags. Now, given that we've done a water change, we've cleaned the protein skimmer, uh, we've done the algae, uh, we've tested the water, it'll be really interesting to see these frags and see if we made a good deal. The most striking coral in this tank is easily this red scrolling Monty. And it's from the Monty that our frags have come from. And such a nice shape and such a nice color, these frags I'm expecting are gonna be particularly nice as well. Now, I've had a bit of a glimpse at them when we're doing the water change, but let's put them in the bucket and have a closer look. So this is the first colony and uh, I really don't want to use the word frag because it's so big, but you can see it started life as a frag on a frag plug and there's the, the stem of the plug. Uh, but it really is a colony to itself. It's a really nice piece. The, the color doesn't really show with the camera, but you can see how it's already starting to split into these different levels. So that is a particularly nice piece. I'm gonna put it on our frag rack and I thought I'd be able to put them all onto this one rack, but uh, this is gonna take up a lot of space by itself. So that's the first colony of our Red Scrolling Monty. Here are two more pieces, uh, two more colonies, and they're obviously significantly smaller, but the shape is really nice. This one has got perfect uh, two sails started, so that will rosette very, very nicely. This one's also a nice frag. Two more. Oh boy, we're definitely gonna run out of space. Well, this uh, little frag rack transporter is looking pretty cool. Although, I don't know where to put this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven so far. Eight, nine, ten. So, scrolling Red Monty is not particularly rare these days. However, having frags like this, which are so well developed and the shape really uh, is what sells these, these pieces. And uh, I would say these are quite valuable frags. All right, there's two still up there that I'm gonna leave because they're a little bit small. Here's the last one, so we've got 11. So I think that is a pretty good haul of red scrolling Monty. Well and truly worth the service if you ask me. So that's it for today's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Something I haven't actually mentioned is this beautiful colony of red Montipora digitata. Now this is probably my second favorite colony of coral in this tank. And you may have noticed that there are actually some frags of this up in the top left. And it's really nice to be able to exchange frags of corals with a customer instead of money for a service. And hopefully next time if I twist his arm, I might be able to get the client to let me swap some of these digitata frags for the service. So that's today's episode of Gallery Quantica TV. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing.
That's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you've subscribed to our channel so you don't miss an episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!